this you, Mr. Shaw, kept the film in his office or possibly at his home? No, I'm afraid not. We checked both those places and we didn't find anything like a film coat. What did you say the title was again? I didn't, but I believe Mr. Shaw referred to it as Endless Passion. No, I'm certain I'd remember anything like that. Now tell me, haven't you any other ideas about where this film might be? No, of course not. You're the detective, not me. I simply felt it was my duty to inform you of the facts. Well, you did the right thing. We're very grateful. Well, the best way to display your gratitude is with your discretion. You see, it has not been easy for me to come here and reveal these things about my daughter-in-law. No. No, I'm sure it hasn't. And I promise you that I'll do everything in my power to prevent this information from becoming public. I'd also appreciate it if you would try not to reveal the source of this information to anyone. I promise you I won't, Mrs. Wheeler, not unless it's absolutely necessary. Thank you. I'll be going. Thank you again, Mrs. Wheeler. It was my duty. Good night. Good night. Okay, let's go, Frank. We've got a little visit to me. Maybe it was a mistake for me to come here today, Dennis. But in a way, I'm so glad that you know about that film. You don't know the strain of carrying around that terrible secret. Terrible secret. You know, Paige... Dad once told me that everyone has a terrible secret. Dennis, I've got to ask you a question. Ask? The other day when I came over and you were upset and you'd been drinking, you said some things and I, I believe you didn't mean them, but they frightened me. I'm afraid I don't remember anything. You said you had a score to settle with Chris so? Shaw. So when I heard that Chris had been murdered... Dennis, did you go to Chris's office that night? I, uh, I think we've done enough talking, Paige. Wheeler, is there anything else you need before I go up to my room? Oh, I can't think of anything. You look awful tired, Mr. Wheeler. I think that business stuff in your mind is having to keep you down. Well, I appreciate your concern, but... All I know is that when you're too tired to eat my brown beef stew, it's time for you to go to bed early. I think you need a good night's rest. No, I'm not going to turn in until I'm sure Iris gets home. Well, see to it that you do. Here's Mrs. Wheeler. Oh, hello. Hi. Getting home uh, a little late. Oh, yes, that meeting with the Fine Arts Committee lasted longer than I thought. Oh, I thought that uh, Raven said that uh, you were going to the meeting of the uh, Charity Ball Committee. Well, when I say Charity Ball Committee, that's not what I meant to say. Uh, uh, it's all right, Vivian. Now that you've let the cat out of the bag, I may just as well tell Alex the truth. What is that? Well, I went to see Dennis and Paige tonight. Now, look, don't say anything. I know you don't approve of my meddling. That's why I asked Vivian to stretch the truth a little. But, well, I felt someone had to do something about that situation. You mean you're to say that you're getting Dennis and Paige back together? No, I wouldn't go that far, but I did talk Dennis into speaking to Paige, and I think that's a step in the right direction. Well, that's wonderful. I, I hope the two of them are going to be able to work something out. Oh, so do I. More than anything, I want to see Dennis happy again. And I'll do whatever it takes to accomplish that. I'm sorry about the late hour, Mrs. Carrington, but it's really very important that you answer a couple of questions. Yes, it is rather late, Detective, as you can see. I was just on my way to bed. Well, this will only take a few minutes. Oh, all right. Uh, we've been doing some follow-through on that matter that you and I were talking about before. Oh, yes, and what matter is that, Detective? The connection between you and Mr. Shaw. Detective Donovan, I have told you. I met him in Hollywood. He was an aspiring producer. It was a very casual thing and a completely professional relationship. Yes, that's what you told me, all right. But you neglected to mention one rather important fact. Oh, yes, and what's that? It seems you actually starred in a porno movie that Mr. Shaw produced. Is that true? Mrs. Carrington, I have no intention.
intention of making any of this public. I have no desire to embarrass you or to pass judgment on you. But I do need some information. Now, in this case, getting that information shouldn't be all that difficult. Even if you don't cooperate. Obviously, there are dozens of people involved in making a movie. Even a pornographic one. Now, it may take us some time, but eventually we are going to locate someone who can give us what we need to know. There, now. That wasn't so difficult, was it? Why didn't you just tell us that at the start? I should think that that reason would be obvious, Detective. Perhaps. But it's equally obvious that that film has disappeared. I don't know why this film should be involved in this in the first place. Because Mr. Shaw seemed to believe that that film was worth a great deal of money. Who told you that? It doesn't matter who told us. What's important is the fact that the film was removed from the safe in Shaw's office. You told me that the safe was opened and empty when you got there. That's right, it was. Well, then what do you want with me? The answer to a direct question, Mrs. Carrington. Did you remove that film from the office? No. Do you have it in your possession now? You're not going to search this place now, are you? No. Not now. We haven't got a warrant. But it won't be difficult to get a warrant, not if we think it'll help us in solving this case. Even if I did have possession of the film, what would that prove? It would prove you had access to Shaw's office on the night of the murder. I killed that man to get the film. I swear I didn't. Does that mean you did take the film? <laughs>